Good morning, Internet. Yashoda here with West Coast Yoga. Today we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto number 1, Chapter 1, Text 9, which reads as follows. Tatra tatra yasyaman bhavata yadvinish chitam pungsam ekantatashayas tanna sangsitumarhasi Translation. Please, therefore, being blessed with many years, explain to us in an easily understandable way what you have ascertained to be the absolute and ultimate good for the people in general. I'm going to read a few words from Srila Prabhupada's purport for good measure. Srila Prabhupada's purport. In Bhagavad Gita, worship of the Acharya is recommended. The Acharyas and Goswamis are always absorbed in thought of the well-being of the general public, especially their spiritual well-being. Spiritual well-being is automatically followed by material well-being. The Acharyas, therefore, give directions in spiritual well-being for people in general. For seeing the incompetencies of the people in this age of Kali, or the Iron Age of Quarrel, the sages requested that Sutta Goswami give a summary of all revealed scriptures, because the people of this age are condemned in every respect. So now we're getting to the essential portion of the scripture. Because the human life is so short, Prahlad Maharaj recommends that we should present the essential portion of study early. How early? Komaram acharet pragyo, before puberty. And what is the result? Dharman bhagavatam iha. The living entity becomes firmly established in their true identity. In the absence of spiritual culture, we find that people become established in an identity that's always changing, like the seasons. If I place my full faith in a material mechanism, that mechanism is going to change. That is the influence of time. Therefore, materialists are at a conflict with time. And the Lord appears to them in that form. He says, time I am destroyer of the worlds. For the devotee, however, Krishna's appearance is a little different. We are able, because of our spiritual knowledge and practice, we can differentiate between the Lord's material and spiritual energies, and therefore these energies affect us differently. We are nourished by the modes of ignorance, passion, and goodness, but we draw our truest support from the spiritual energy. Prabhupada says that Materially, a person requires some food to work. That's why we're offering this prashadam, abundant prashadam. People require some food to work. But when you come to the spiritual platform, actually, you don't even need food. And that's one of the tests. If a person can restrict their eating, that's a symptom of spiritual advancement. So back to the subject at hand. Sutta Goswami has been requested to present only the essential portion of knowledge specifically for the deliverance of people in general. Is it so bad in the age of Kali? Are we so condemned? Well, they're going to state later, Manda sumanda matayo manda padrita. We have many, many counts against us. For starters, we are living in a portion of the creation called Bhu Mandala. Bhu Mandala is the middle portion where passion is very prominent. That's one strike against us. And we are in a very specific species that is called human species. Very passionate. As humans, we occupy a specific lifestyle. That's called family life. Very passionate. And where do we live as family people? In the city. Very passionate. So passion, 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 sixfold counting against us in the material world. Therefore, we have to take help from Mother Nature. From the natural gifts. Krishna says, I have given you the process of sacrifice. And in this way, humans and demigods can live in concert. The demigods provide all the natural gifts, fruit, flower, water. The humans take the gifts and offer them to Vishnu. And in this way, everyone achieves liberation. And to the extent that we are divorced from the system of sacrifice to Vishnu, to that extent, we are creating an artificial paradise. Forget God, 
or perhaps become God. So thank you very much. See you for class tomorrow. Hare Krishna.